speaker of this hour is Brother Lonnie Smith. He is the minister and elder of the Eastside Church of Christ in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. He has served there for 14 years. Previous to this work, he was uh, at the Scarborough Church of Christ in Oak Ridge, Tennessee for 17 years, and he has preached for a total of 35 years. He's a graduate of this school, of the, the Southeast Institute of Biblical Studies, when it was the East Tennessee School of Preaching and Missions. He served as the Dean of Students, where he was an instructor for 15 years, and he holds a PhD from the Union Institute and University. He, has an associate, he was associate professor at Amherst University in Montgomery, Alabama for five years, and he is a licensed clinical mental health counselor in the state of North Carolina. He also holds gospel meetings, speaks in various lectureships, and conducts workshops. He is the author of a children's book, Weighty. He is married to Katana uh, Smith and has two daughters, Brittany and Brooke. And so we're very thankful that he has come to us this morning to speak on following Christ in a medicated culture. So, Brother Lonnie Smith, will you come speak to us? I asked my daughters, uh, Brittany and Brooke, uh, how do you spell relief? And Brooke usually try to help her dad. You know, as you get older, your spelling gets kind of off and and she said, R-E-L-I-E-F. And I said, no. I said, what about R-O-L-A-I-D-S? <laughs> now, many of us remember that. In 1976, when Rolaids came out, that anti-acid, and many people, were, and that, that, that commercial was just brilliant. But when we look at this phrase today, many people are trying to spell relief through medication. And what I want to do this morning, I want to give you a general and very specific description of what's going on in our society today when it comes to medication in our culture. And I think you're going to be very surprised. First of all, our nation, the United States, the Western culture, we lead all the countries in the world when it comes to medication, all of them. That means that since 2019, 841,000 people have died of overdose. 25% of the commercials on television are dealing with prescription drugs. And 70% of overdose is done by opioids, and we'll, we'll talk more about that. We have a major challenge because basically what, what, what we're seeing is that the world has decided, okay, now we have problems. We have a lot of problems in this world. Many of our brethren actually talked about those particular problems yesterday. But the world is taking medication to solve their problems. They're not following Christ. Now, here's some challenges that we are up against, major challenges. When it comes to emotional pain, Prescription drugs are being given. Emotional pain is a little different from mental illness. It's just that you're going through life problems. You're having headaches and all types of difficulties. Did you not know that among children and the elderly, there are more psychiatric drugs given than any other group? Now, let's talk about that for a moment. When I was working on my PhD, one of my professors was a professor at Duke University. He was, believe it or not, his name was Dr. Looney. He was a top child psychiatrist. And I took him in the class of psychopharmacology. 
And he taught me a lot about how medication works in our system and what's going on in our society. And he even told me back, back then, and it's been about 25 years ago, that medication is going to increase and increase and increase. I still work with children today. I still work with adolescents. And I, I do have, at times, some of these adolescents that are only like 14 years of age, and they are on like six different medications. And I ask, why is that? Who is your doctor? When I was here in, in Knoxville, the school allowed me to have my little semi-practice when I was working on my degree. And some of the psychiatrists would call me and say, well, what do you think this, this particular patient of mine should, should be on? I said, not on a lot of drugs. Did you not know that the, the brain does not fully develop of a child until age 18? And when you put a child on so many drugs, what do you think it's doing to their brain? And this is what's going on in our society. And we're seeing it more and more and more. And they are really taking advantage of the elderly. They say, here, you just take this, you just take this, you just take this. So you need to be careful. Let me, let me just give you a hint, and then I'm going to go on to the other. When it comes to ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, you have to be very careful with that. Many, many folks do not realize that ADHD is, is genetic. It is hereditary. It's not that anyone can be on this particular drug. So all, all of a sudden, there are... Doctors, they, they may prescribe it, not knowing the background of that particular patient. But let me say this, in my experience, in my own observation, I mean a very live experience. We're living in a world that is overly stressed. The world is trying to live their own way and how they're trying to make it their own way. They say, well, I can continue to live the way that I want to live by taking a lot of drugs. Maybe it can help me through. But let me, let me tell you something. The pace that the world is going, it'll never work. Only following Jesus, the way God had it planned out, is going to help the world to see how we ought to live. Now let's talk about opioids, all right? You've heard that, right? Even, even before COVID started, even before COVID started, you've heard all about these people being, uh, just going through an overdose, overdose, overdose. There is an area in, in, in where, where I live that the police officers used to go back at the end of the night and in the early morning, there were cars there and there were people in cars, and, and they were dead. They overdosed. Many of the overdoses is not because of suicide either. It's because folks are taking these medications and they do not know how to take them. Now let me just go with this general and then we will get to, to our main thoughts this morning. Painkillers. How many of us have been on painkillers? You know, I remember my first time on painkillers. They had to rush me to the hospital. I got sick. The doctor said, if anyone told me that you take drugs, I'll never believe them because you cannot even handle a painkiller. But now, painkillers now are not so much for physical pain. People are taking it for emotional pain. And let's say, for example, I'm just going to give you a quick lesson in psychopharmacology, just quick. And you can write these notes down. I don't think I'm talking about this in the uh, book. So it's probably better to get the uh, tape because it's good for young people to actually Hear this. 
So we have opioids, we have morphine, which, is, which are painkillers, and you have hydrocodone and oxycodone. These are all prescription drugs, and some of you may have been on it, and it's good if the doctor puts you on there and he puts you on the right levels of it, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with taking pain medicine, but it's just the uh, disadvantage, the advantage that people have and abuse that people have done with it. And then from these prescription drugs, you have heroin. Now, no doctor is going to uh, prescribe heroin because it's against the law. You can go to jail. Now, what's after that? What happens? Well, with heroin, you can smoke it, snort it, inject it. And a lot of our young people, even in the school system and in in high school system, they they vape a lot, but some of them are getting hold of that. And I, I know just recently, in the last three weeks, I was uh, at a certain thing, and um, they, they called me up to this room, and this young lady was having a major overdose. And everybody thought something was wrong with her. I said, no, no, she's taking something. The marijuana that some of you used to use, I'm just saying, I don't know. It's different from the marijuana today. It's laced with all kinds of stuff. So, have everyone heard of the word vitinol? Vitinol, okay. All right, now think about this. You have opioids, that family have heroin, and now vitinol is 50 to 100% more potent than heroin. Now what happens now when our nation start taking this vitinol to get a high or to release emotional pain or to have some pleasure? Well, what happens is this, that a person that is taking that they don't realize that it affects the nervous system, it affects the brain, it, it affects your breathing, and some take too much of it and they die. And basically, I tell young people, if you get high, you're gonna die. So we're looking at two things that's going on in our society when it comes to this medication culture, and that is that people are trying to get rid of pain, but they also want to have pleasure. That, Dopamine, some of you have taken some of these classes where you study the brain and the dopamine is supposed to help you to feel really good about yourself. Well, these drugs really do. They put you on a high that you are relaxed. You don't have to worry about anything, but you got to keep taking more and more and more. And when people take more and more and more, they die. More young people are dying right now. Did you not know the leading cause of death right now from ages 18 to 45? is overdose. So we are in a world, in our culture, the Western culture, in the, in the United States, that's over-medicated. Now, what do we do about it? Let's get to the lesson. In Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8, Paul is dealing with mystical polytheism and Judaism. He's dealing with these agnostics that basically just simply taught that Christ does not have all the preeminence, that Christ is not first place, and that there are other things in, in your life that you can have apart from Christ. And there in verse 8, and it's a good principle verse for, for about anything that we're going through today, all the great subjects and the topics that were spoken on yesterday, it, it fits that too. Here Paul says, don't, don't let anyone take you captive or spoil you through philosophy or vain deceits after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world. And watch this, but not after Christ. 
And this is exactly what our world has been doing. They have been taking all these things. It could be drugs. I know the subject was dealing with sexuality yesterday, abortion. And there are some other subjects that will be discussed about the gender. They're taking all these things. And they say, hey, these are the answers to, to mankind. And they're leaving Christ outside. But well, look at verse 10 there of Colossians 2. Paul here, after, after he says that Christ is the Godhead, he's the full fulfillment of that bodily. He's all God. He says that you are complete in him who's head of all principality and power. Notice, I do not need to find completeness in anything else in my life except Jesus. The world needs to come to understand that. And the, the church, we have a very important responsibility to preach to the world that look here, you're trying to find completeness and satisfaction and pleasure and pain relief in all these other areas, but there's only one that you can find really completeness is, and that is in Christ Jesus. When you think about the other heart of that message, you remember what, when Satan told Jesus that since you be the son of, of God, turn these stones into bread. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And I'm going to talk about that in just a little bit. The world needs the word of God. God knows that we need bread, right? God has provided us bread. God even has provided us medication to help us feel better. To help us to know about our bodies and take care of us. And I'm thankful for that. But medication apart from Christ is not going to save this world. Only the word of God through the gospel is going to save the world. And we need, as the church, continue to preach it. And we need to become very aware of what's going on in our society. We cannot be blinded by that. We need to preach Christ and him crucified. Also in John 10.10, 10, it's kind of looking at this introduction. Jesus says that, you know, the thief come to steal and kill and destroy, but I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus came to this earth not only to die for our sins, but to show us how to live. He came to give us a quality of life. I'm thankful for that. You imagine today, and I don't know how, I don't know how people do it today, that they're, they're trying to live their life apart from Christ. And you've, you've heard the news that since uh, COVID, more people are drinking alcohol now. You know, that's a whole nother subject. People are taking more medication to trying to deal with the trials of life. James says, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. And I appreciate the messages on yesterday. A general message is that in spite of all the things that are happening in this world, we just need to be faithful. We need to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. As much as we know, do our labor is not in vain in the Lord. We've known Christians who have suffered through this COVID and still suffer. And have passed. But medication, over medicating because of life's problems is not the answer. Now let's look at if we can have a like a today's message. Okay. In the book, I noticed that it has 1 Timothy 6, 8. It should be 1 Timothy 4, 8. Probably I was sleeping when I was writing or something. 
But here in that, in our first point, it tells us that body exercise profits little, but godliness in all things. Having this promise in this life that now is and that is to come. Meaning that, yes, medication, we can use that principle, medication profits little. It does profit. Exercise profits. But it's not the answer. Godliness is profitable, notice, in all things, not only in this life right now. And, and th just think about if we can talk to our friends and our families about this, that real true godliness is what's going to help you now in the life which is to come. So we need to balance our life. We need to balance our life, not only when it comes to medication, but in other things also. Brother Glenn talked about his KFC yesterday. I told him I'm going to use that. And the kingdom first Christian should be our motto. Because when you look at Matthew 6, 30, 33, that Jesus promised us that if we put the kingdom and his righteousness of God first, that all these things will be added. God is able. Our God is able. He can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. We just need to put him first. The second point on, on this today's message is that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Just use that. We have been bought with a price, according to 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20. We should be glorifying God in our bodies and our spirit, which is God's. The world needs to see that the Christian is living a life. Because I guarantee you that when the world sees how we're living and they see that, hey, how is it that you are going through these problems, the same problems I'm going through, and you're going through the same problem. How is it that you are able to maintain your sanity? And you're able to say, it is Jesus. He is the one that has caused me to maintain my sanity and that he lives in me and through me. And that's what Paul was saying in Galatians 2.20, that latter part. For I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus lives in me and through me. That's all I need. I know God is going to supply my every need. So I need to glorify God in my body and in my spirit. And then the next one there, I, I think that one is in the book too. I, I mentioned that I was going to talk about Matthew 4 verse 4, but I I think I already have mentioned that, so we'll just go to that, that last one. The last one deals with that the love of Christ controls me, constrains me. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14, for the love of Christ constraineth me. Meaning that when I realize the love of Christ, when you, when, when you look at that verse, you can say, okay, I, I know that I need to love Christ. But actually that verse is saying, when I come to realization how much Christ loved me, it causes me to be compelled and constrained and controlled. And I can be in control because of Christ who loved me. And then I no longer live for myself, but for him who loved me and gave himself for me. You see that this lesson is, I mean, we can title this following Christ in a, in a medicated culture, but we can just say following Christ in our own culture with these principles. And then if you remember, even in this same chapter, Paul ends up talking about different things. And in 1 Corinthians 6, 12, Paul says, all things are lawful unto me. But all things are not expedient. 
All things are lawful to me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Notice, I will not be brought under the power of any, meaning I'm not going to allow something to control me except Jesus. And there's a lot of errors that we can talk about. We, uh, the lesson last night was talking about division. I'm not going to allow division to that is very general to control me that I'm causing a fight in the, in the church building. But I'm going to allow Christ to guide me and that I'm going to live a harmonious life with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, someone may ask, well, what should we do as the church? And I think I've already been mentioning those things. One, when you think about the hope we are living in, Romans 12, 2 tells us that we should not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. We need to transform our minds into Jesus so the world can see Jesus. So the world can see that there's a lot more to life than just being medicated. Also, I love the Colossian letter and because Paul really deals with the preeminence of Christ in this letter. And in Colossians 3, 4, he says, Christ, who is our life. Who's your life? And we cannot get discouraged. Yes, we've gone through COVID and we've been kind of hidden from a lot of folks. But Lord's will, he's opened up doors. People are getting out now. It's spring and people are still, now people are trying to find their way back to reality, a life. This is where the Christian comes in. One of my favorite verses is 1 Peter 3 and verse 15. Sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Put Christ in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you the reason of the hope. Notice that is within you. What's in you? With meekness and in fear. This is the mission of the church. This is what we should be doing. And I'm pretty much confident that none of you here in this audience that you are abusing drugs. But you know people that are. You know people that are trying to find a pain relief from emotional pain relief in this world. And they're also trying to find pleasure. And you can show them the way that it is Christ and him crucified. I wanted to save my uh, type of introductions at the end, but I appreciate the invitation of being here back at the school. It's been a long time since I've been here. Now, I preach in this pulpit a lot, though, so it's kind of normal. And it's good to see all of you here. And if I start calling names, I'm in trouble, aren't I? Because I know a lot of you. But you know who you are, from my fellow brethren, to my former teachers, and even formal students. And I hope that as the school goes forward, that Christ will be, and I appreciate the students that I hear them talk, they mention Christ a lot, that Christ will be emphasized, and that you can make it in this world. But you're going to have to get your hands dirty sometime. You're going to have to know what's going on in this world. Don't stick your hand, your head in the sand and not realize what's going on. You need to understand that people are in a lot of pain, but there's an answer to it. People have a misunderstanding of life, but there's an answer. And his name is Jesus. Thank you.